Good morning, friends. So happy to see you. I am excited you're here because I thought this would be a great morning to start our first reading lesson with each other. Um, and you might be saying this, Bush, we've been doing lessons the entire year. Yes, we have, but this is our first one from home. So in our classrooms, we always read books together, right? And we always have a partner we sit with so we can turn to that partner and have conversations with, right? So you might be thinking, Miss Bush, I'm at home. I don't have my partner. Well, I have thought of that and I'm gonna show you some things that you can do so you can still have your really important partner talk. So if you have a pet, like Miss Bush has her pet dog, Huck, Huck has a bunch of little toys. I could use one of his toys to turn and talk to. Now you might be saying, I don't have a pet. Okay, but do you have toys of your own? Oh, right, you could use your action figure to turn and talk to. You can use anything to talk to. Now, Miss Bush looked in her kitchen. I have this big pineapple. Could I turn and talk to my pineapple? Absolutely. But you can also turn and talk to your pretend buddy here. You wanna try that? Awesome, so let's practice with a question. I'm thinking of a yummy question. Ooh, I have it. What is your favorite ice, ice cream flavor and why? So let's think about that. Favorite ice cream flavor and why? All right, are you ready to try it? When Miss Bush says turn to your partner, I want you to turn to your partner, say hi, and talk about the question with them. Watch how Miss Bush does that. Ready? Turn to your partner. Hi, partner. So, should I go first or? Oh, I went first last time, so it's your turn. Okay, I'm ready to listen. Uh-huh. Wow. I heard you say your favorite ice cream flavor was chocolate brownie because you love the brownie chunks. My turn. My favorite ice cream flavor is mint chocolate chip because I love green and I love how the ice cream is green and I also love the little chocolate chips. Thanks, partner. Did you see how simple that was? I still had a conversation with my partner here, practicing my conversation skills. Do you think you can try that today during our story? Awesome. So friends, what I want to review with you is I want us to think about right before we had to leave our classroom, we were reading nonfiction books like this story tools. Remember this? Awesome. Now, nonfiction books, remember, gives us true information about people or about things, such as tools that we use. Now, we also read another nonfiction book, A Day in the Life of a Zoo Keeper, again, giving us true information about her job and what she does. We also read another nonfiction book, On the Go, giving us true information about the types of things people use to get around. Not just cars or bikes, you can use other things. So friends, again, nonfiction books give us real true information about people or about things. I have a question for you. Now, instead of turning to your partner, you can just talk out loud, and if you see Miss Bush go like this, that means I'm listening. Okay, here's your question. I wanna hear you talking. What do you know about nonfiction books? Wow, readers, I heard some really good examples. So some people said, well, I know that nonfiction books use real photographs, right? A real person, this is a real picture, a photograph. I heard another friend say, well, sometimes in nonfiction books, there's a table of contents. Let's find one. Zookeeper has one, table of contents taking all the information and just breaking it up into little tiny parts that we can read. I heard another smart friend say, well, I just know if I read a nonfiction book, it's gonna teach me something new that I don't know yet. Absolutely, these are all great answers. Okay, friends, so over the next couple weeks, we're gonna be focusing on one topic, and this is a really 
awesome topic. I think it's gonna be your favorite. The topic is baby animals. So before we get into our new book, I want to review one chart with you because this is what you'll be doing today when we read our story, okay? So Miss Bush taught you a long time back about how good readers always wonder about the story that they're reading. Now, when you wonder, you're just simply thinking of questions that you still have about the story that we just read or listened to. So wondering is just having more questions about the story. Now also, good readers know if they wonder about the story that they're reading, then it really helps them to better understand what's happening in their book. Does that make sense? So if you look at our friend here, he has the book Tools actually, and we just finished re reading it, and he's thinking of questions that he still has about the book Tools. He's wondering still. Can you repeat after me? I wonder. Awesome. Now, you might be wondering, Miss Bush, you told us the topic is baby animals, but what baby animal are we learning about? Well, are you ready? Okay. So friends, today you're gonna hear a new nonfiction book about baby penguins, or we also call them penguin chicks. And after hearing the book, you will share with all of us some wondering, some questions you still have about baby penguins <clears throat> or baby um, penguin chicks. Does that make sense? Awesome. Are you ready? Okay. Ms. Bush is gonna start the story. Now I have three questions I'm gonna ask you during the story. So those are the three times that you get to practice your partner talk. Does that make sense? Awesome. Let's get our brains going. Let's get our wonderings, our questions starting about baby penguins. So this is called a baby penguin story. It was written by Martha E. Restard. Baby penguins. A white egg sits in a rocky nest. A tired dad sits on top. Pip, the egg cracks. Pip means to crack something. Out hatches a fluffy penguin chick. Cheep, chatter, peep. The tiny chick is hungry. Its mom spits up fish into its open mouth. Burr, shiver, ah, cuddle. Mom huddles around her chick. Huddle means to get in really close. Mom huddles around her chick. In its icy world, the chick stays warm. I have my first question for you and your partner. Ready? What did you learn about how adult penguins take care of their babies? Turn to your partner. Okay, turn back to Miss Bush in three, two, one. I heard some partners say, well, I think the mommy penguin takes care of her baby by making sure it stays warm. Awesome, let's keep going. Hello, who are you? The chick finds friends in its colony. A, co a colony is a group that you live with. Baby chicks, play while their parents find food. Waddle, waddle, belly slide. The young penguins go for an icy ride. Back they hop across the rocky ground. Molt, scratch, Friends, molt means that the baby is losing its feathers and it's growing new ones. Just like how we lose our baby teeth and we grow bigger ones. Same thing, but with feathers, molt. Molt, scratch, pick. Fluffy feathers fall off the chick. With its beak, it preens. Preens means to clean. So it preens or cleans new waterproof feathers. Are you ready for your second question? Here we go. What did you learn about how penguin chicks play? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I 
heard one per, oh, sorry. Turn back to Miss Bush in three, two, one. I heard one partner group say, well, I think I heard something about belly slide. So I'm wondering what that might mean. I like how those partners were using a wonder already. I heard another partner say, I think I heard the word hop. So maybe ba baby penguins like to hop with each other. Awesome job, let's keep going. Splish, splash, it's time to learn swift sw swimming skills. The penguin chick needs speed to catch a tasty swarm or group of krill. Krill is a little tiny sea animal that penguins e eat almost like shrimp. The penguin chick needs speed to catch a tasty swarm of krill, a big group. You go first. No, you jump in. Through cold ocean waves, penguins seem to fly. Their wings act as flippers. The chick swims up for air. It dives down deep. Catch a fish, sw swallow it live. Yum. Now it's time for goodbye. The young penguin is off to catch fishy snacks. Someday it will return to build its own nest. Here's my last question. What did you learn about how penguins move through the water? Turn to your partner. Awesome. I heard some friends say, well, just by looking at the photograph, it looks like penguins can move through the water by diving in. I heard another friend say, well, I think they use their flippers to help them swim. Awesome thoughts. So my friends, we have finished the story of baby penguins story, <laughs> and we are going to, um, Think about the story together. We're going to answer some questions and then we're going to share what we're still wondering about the story of baby penguin. All right. So I want to ask you these questions. What I want you to do is to turn to your partner and talk about it still, just like you did when I was reading the book and Miss Bush is going to lean in and listen. Okay. Here's our question. What are some things you are wondering after hearing this book about penguin chicks? What are some things you are wondering about hearing this, after hearing this book about penguin chicks? Okay. And you might say, I wonder, what are you still wondering? Turn to your partner. Okay, turn back in three, two, one. Wow, I heard some really smart wonders from a lot of partners. Can I share with you what some partners were saying? All right, I heard some partners say, I wonder if all baby birds hatch from eggs. That's a great wonder to still have. I also heard someone say, I wonder why their feathers fell out. That's a great wonder to still have. I heard one more wonder from another partner group. They said, I wonder if other dad birds sit on the eggs. If we go back to that part, I think it was in the beginning, wasn't it? When it showed this dad bird, a tired dad sits on top, on top of the egg. Friends, you still have really good wonders about baby penguins, penguin chicks. Awesome. We did it. We read the book. You turned and talked with your partner and you shared the wonders you still have about baby penguins. Do you want to hear about what we're going to do tomorrow? Great. So tomorrow you will hear and wonder about a book about another baby animal. So tomorrow, it won't be the baby penguins. 
but we're going to be wondering about a different baby animal. Does that sound good? All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I hope you learned a lot about baby penguins. Go share some of that information with your families, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, friends, bye.